Hey, and welcome to the Joey Miller Podcast. I'm Pastor Joey from Champion Christian Center, and I'm so excited for you to tune in today. I brought back one of my favorite preachers, and that is, yeah, the favorite, my favorite, uh, yes. is Pastor Nathan Miller. So he's my hubby, and we just did a marriage podcast not too long ago, and we didn't get to all of your questions. We put some questions out on Instagram, and some of the questions not only had to do with marriage, but they were uh, questions about family. Yes. And so we wanted to come back and talk about family, raising a, ba- a faith-based family in 2023. I recently did a podcast called uh, Counterculture, Going Against the Culture When It can't- Comes to Raising a Family. And so this would be great to piggyback on that podcast. But we're going to talk about parenting. We're going to answer some of the questions that came in. And we are by no means experts. But let us tell you a little bit about us. We are Um, experts. Our children are perfection. (laughs) Said no parent ever. (laughs) Said a parent of like an infant. (laughs) Yeah, just out of the womb. Launched up podcast or a blog on parenting. There so, you go. God bless their souls. Um, we're all working in progress. So, That's but, great. Um, so we have five kids and mm-hmm. our oldest just got married. He is 21. And then we have an 18 year old. We have a 16 year old. We have a 13 year old and we have an 11 year old. Good job. So Good job. Five kids, numbers. three boys, two girls. And um, we always laugh because when we go somewhere and they need their ages or birth dates, they look to me because sometimes it's always changing. Uh, other people get it wrong. So hmm. every now and again, they'll ask, Dad, what's my birthday? Yeah. What year was I born? Uh, How I'm old am I? Good. I'm but it does. Good. It changes every every year. So yeah. And there's a lot of them. It is. So we have fun with it, though. Um, it It is quite, uh, it's been a, quite an exciting journey. And so much uh, that you learn about God. Um, uh, being a parent, uh, you learn about God, the Father, um, how He sees us, and how yeah. we reflect those things to our children. But For sure. uh, we have a blast. We do, and we just married kids. off our oldest. And um, if you've heard me say before, I'll say it again. Um, that was just such an amazing experience. Our oldest son has been with us. We had him two years into our marriage, so he has been with us for it feels like the whole journey. So. Um, We're going to be married 24 years in August, and uh, 21 out of those 24 years, he has been a part of our lives. So he's seen us in every stage, pretty much. He's been with us when we had nothing. Um, He's been able to enjoy the blessing of God. So um, it's just beautiful uh, to raise children in the ways of God. And so uh, really launching today's podcast, piggybacking off of the podcast I did on raising a countercultural family in 2023. Uh, Let's talk a little bit. We're going to answer some questions about really what it looks like to raise a family now. I mean, it's it's a lot different even than it was when we had him 21 years ago. Yeah. You know, I think that the world um, is ever evolving. I think the moral decay of America um, is seen more now more than ever. And so things that maybe um, we, you know, as we grew up, uh, you know, however many years ago, um, you didn't have some of the challenges, although there were always challenges. You know, uh, there's always going to be challenges in the earth. Um, they just look different in every generation. And so I think in a lot of ways, it's just surrounding them. And so, um, you know, your podcast on countering the culture um, is a great key to, to learning to how to counter that culture. And really to stand out. You know, Romans 12, it it talks about how we're not here to conform to the world and the pattern of the world, but be transformed. And it's that transformation that allows us to make impact on this world um, for us and our children. And, you know, the the center of that podcast was focused around uh, discovering and keeping to the values that you set as a standard for your family and realizing if you don't set those values and live by them. There's a difference between setting them and actually living by them. A lot of times in families and parenting, we want to say, do what I say and not what I do. And that's not necessarily how it goes. That a lot of things are actually caught rather than taught. It's important to teach and uh, and to model out. But uh, setting those values, not only by what we say, but living them out, following through, being counterculture. Don't let the culture set your values for you 
but you set the values of your home. And so um, it's been an adventure. We're by no means perfect, but um, we just even said it recently to our kids. There's no such thing as a perfect family, yeah. but... Only perfect love. Only you know? perfect so, love. So, you know, the, the more you grow in that love and the more you grow in that knowledge and that tr and the truth of God's word, the more you really can become everything that God's called you to become. And so, you know, I think good parenting always starts with you. You know, it always starts with you as the individual, you as the parent. And uh, to your point, you know, you teach what you know, but you reproduce who you are. And so, you know, who you're becoming is the most important key to parenting. Um, who you're becoming, your walk with God, your relationship, because to your point, you they will become. That's why the expression, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. It's because you become a byproduct of your parents. And so sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. Um, but thank God that we have a heavenly father who's perfect, that we look to for everything. And by his word, we can become everything he's called us to become. So good. We're going to answer lots of questions uh, that came in. Uh, some of them were, how do you raise your children to have a relationship with God on their own? Some of the questions were, how do you raise kids in the ministry? Um, we've had questions about um, raising adult children. So we're going to get to all of these things. But I want to talk about uh, really establishing, first and foremost, a vision for your family and what that looks like and the importance of that and how vision is truly like uh, the railroad tracks of our lives, that it keeps us focused, it keeps us together. Um, let's talk about, you know, how we can create a vision for our family. What does that look like? Because we can't pretend like that everybody's listening here came from a Christian home or knows like the 10 steps to creating values for your family. So the quick and easy version, uh, just talking real with you today on the podcast, is how do you set a, how do you set a vision for your family? You know, I think it really comes down to you know us as believers. Um, uh, you know, I know you've heard it said before too, but um, we're Christians first, and everything else uh, is after that. And uh, you know, Joshua said the same thing. He said, "As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord." Um, the number one core value you've got to have if you're going to stand out, going to be different, if you're going to be a light in your generation um, and make an impact. Um, you know, I'm so thankful today our, our children are making impact. Many of their friends are coming to Christ. And, uh, you know, it, it's because you put the right values in place. And so, you know, I think the things of God, making sure that by our decisions, is really what proves our values. Because you can have a nice piece of paper and a nice list, but if there's no action connected to, if you're actually not living out your values, um, you're just only fooling yourself. Yeah, and, and values are a part of vision. Um, and I love the scripture that you talked about in Joshua because Joshua actually came to a point where he was, he just drew a line in the sand. He was frustrated with the wishy-washy living. And finally, he drew a line in the sand and he said, look, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And if you want to join me, cross over this line. And, you know, really that's what creating values and vision are in our family. It's drawing that line in the sand and saying, you know what, this is the way, the direction that our family's going to go. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing about that as a Christian is that when you're creating a vision for your family, um, you're not limited by how you were raised. You're not limited by what was modeled out for you. That uh, by default, a lot of times we revert back to how we were parented sure. or the way that we had s saw things done. I was actually just watching something. It was so funny about moms who parented in the 80s and they're talking about the red dye and the Cheetos and <laughs> all the things that you can't do now. But but by uh, but children of God, we're not limited by any of the, of the factors that, that we were handed. Any of the cards that we were dealt with yeah. aren't limiting factors in our lives. But now the word of God is uh, the, the picture that we should get as how our family can be. That maybe your family has been in disunity. Maybe uh, you have certain things that seem to loom, loom over your family. Now that you're in Christ... Uh, the slate is clean. Now you are a child of God. Now you can build upon the promises that are in his word for your family. And family matters to God. Uh, so, so getting that fresh vision, setting out that vision. And you and I have sat down and talked about what a vision looks like for our family. We're on the same page. When we do premarital counseling with people, we'll have conversations. How many kids do you want to have? What role do you see your in-laws playing in, uh, in your children's lives? Having the hard conversations are actually setting the vision 
for your family because that is what is going to actually be uh, what holds you together through life. That when you have a disagreement in your family, you choose love because the vision is to have a family in unity and not in discord. And so, so what would you say uh, would be a great advice on creating a vision for the family. You talked about values a little bit, mm -hmm. but, but to sit down and get a vision for what that looks like. Yeah, you know, uh, a great leadership point is is begin with the end in mind. So, you know, wh what do you want it to look like? What is what is your viewpoint of what your family, you want it to look like? And I think when you can begin to, uh, with your spouse, articulate that, well, you know, what, what do you want that to look like when they grow up? We want our children to, to know God's word, to hear his voice. We want um, our family to... Uh, you know, be together. We want to fellowship. We want to have fun. We, what is, what does the picture look like? Because, you know, if you can begin with the end in mind and you can say, this is what we want, that will determine the steps you take in between. So, so you might say, you know, I want, I want us to be a close family. Well, if you're never connecting, if you don't have time at the dinner table, or if you don't have these connection moments, or we want our children to be men and women of God, if they're not, if you're not helping them grow spiritually, um, again, it's just a nice thought, it's a nice wish, it's something we put on paper, but you have to begin with the end in mind, and then after you have that picture of what you want your life and your family to look like, then you work back from there. Okay, if I want them to be spiritually healthy, then what, what is required of me? Well, again, I can't ask my children to do anything that I'm not willing to do, so I have to make sure that I'm modeling out what I want to see in their lives, and again, when I see I want them spiritually, what am I making sure? I want to make sure they have a Bible reading plan. Are they reading the Word? Are they in the presence of God? These are things. What are they listening to? Um, you know, what are they, uh, what is going in their ear gates, their eye gates? What are they processing? Because these all have the entrance to the heart. So, you know, you, you begin to look and process from knowing what you want it to look like, and then you can begin to put practical action steps in, in place so that you arrive at the destination and you'll never arrive at a destination that you haven't processed and you haven't set yeah. out. How often do you get in the car and, and you're like, oh, we're at Disneyland, like a happy surprise. How do surprise. we get here? Like, yeah. No, yeah, I love what you said because truly vision uh, creates the values that you live by. And so many people, and maybe you're watching today and you're like, this is me. Like, I've been, uh, I've been kidding myself. I thought one day I was just going to wave a wand and I was going to have a child who loved the Lord. Um, I was going to have a family that was close and, and I haven't done anything to invest in it. Um, a lot of times we think that things are just going to happen because we have good intentions. But your values and your vision drive your, your every uh, move that you make as a family. Nothing, nothing good happens without intention. I'm very, very, we're very intentional about our family. And so, you know, knowing the end goal of, you know, my end vision picture is being like close to 100 sitting around our family room with all of our kids enjoying yeah. a Christmas with grandchildren and great grandchildren and, and and so that's like an end vision healthy and strong and happy and everyone enjoying each other well that's a great end vision but what do I have to do on the daily weekly monthly yeah. to see that come to pass that means making some difficult decisions that means if I want to raise godly children who value the house of God I'm going to have to say no to some things I'm going to have to say you know what I would love for you to be like an all-star gymnast but um, you know what we're Christians first and everything else comes second. So therefore, I am saying yes to the value of prioritizing the house of God and no to uh, we don't do that on Sundays. And so, so those decisions can be difficult to make. Trust me, we know we have kids who like uh, sports and athletics and you can get sucked into the, your child's going to be the next NFL quarterback <laughs> uh, mindset uh, and you're blowing it gymnastic greatness <laughs> of America that wins the Olympic gold or, you know, there's a thousand things out there. There's, you know, yes. all these sports, all these, you know, um, you have it in, in every area. Um, you know, I think the thing about life is if you're not intentional about your life, um, you'll never arrive at the destination that you want. You have to live intentionally. You have to be, say, be able to say, if I'm not doing, if I'm making a choice to do this and I'm saying yes to this, I'm also saying no to something else. And so, you know, I think that if you're not careful, I think you have to have a constant analysis. These conversations, especially with you and your spouse, where you're saying, 
is, is the product look like what we want it to? And if it doesn't, what do we need to adjust? We need to course correct this. We need yeah. to realize, hey, there's a little bit of an attitude here. Why is there a constant attitude? Let's have a conversation. Sometimes it's you need to spend more time with your kids. Sometimes they just need uh, discipline. Whatever it might be, you have to have this constant analysis of where we are and where we're going. Where, where is it we are now and where are we going? These are two questions you have to ask yourself consistently, whether it's your relationship with your spouse or your family, where are we now? Where do we want to be? And that constant analyzing through the help of the Holy Spirit is going to help you navigate to make sure that you arrive at your destination and your kids so become everything that God's called them to be. It's so good. I love the proverb that says a wise woman looks after the affairs of her household. And I That's think good. about that as parents, that, it, that we have to be wise, that we have to, to really look over as if we were running a, a business, so to say. We have to look at the welfare of our children, look how they're doing emotionally, uh, really assess things uh, quite frequently. And, um, you know, back to the counterculture, Christianity is not buying into the busy. Uh, you know, the enemy, the world wants to keep us so busy that we don't have time to have these conversations. We don't have time to sit down with our teenager and say, hey, what have you been reading in the Bible? Uh, we, don't, we don't have the courage, so to say, to say, take your ear, earbuds out. Let's talk um, on the way to dinner. Uh, to really make those steps towards saying, you know what, I'm not going to let the busyness of life, I'm not going to let the weariness of life keep me from course correction. And so maybe you're listening today and you're just having kids. You have a newborn, like, great, you haven't screwed anything up yet. <laughs> um, but, you know, maybe today you're like, you know what, I, I don't know, I became a Christian later, or maybe I became serious about my Christianity as my children are a little bit older. Um, now what do I do? Well, let me tell you, there is hope for you. You haven't screwed everything up. Uh, let's talk about that for a second. You know, let's, let's speak to the person who's listening who maybe has hasn't done it perfectly, has made mistakes, or became a Christian a little bit later in life. Now what? Yeah, you know, I think first thing you need to hear is um, there, there's no such thing as a perfect person. Um, you know, you look at even the disciples Jesus chose. Um, you know, today you, you look at, they walk with Jesus every single day, and they can still royally mess up. You know, they were cursing people. They were, uh, Peter, th he walked with Jesus for three and a half years and tries to assassinate a guy in the garden. Um, you know, Thomas had all these doubting issues. And so I think sometimes we get this viewpoint, like we're going to at some point arrive at perfection or um, sometimes even people think they're perfect. And, and it's just really rooted in pride anyway. But I, I think, you know, for those of you that are listening that maybe you've messed up, you need to hear that um, today's a new day. Wipe the slate clean. Um, Paul said it like this, forget what's behind and press on towards what's ahead. Um, there, what, what I look for in people is not perfection because you'll never find it. It's progression. And so are you progressing today towards who you're called to be? And what I found is this, when you focus on you being the best you, and who God has created you to be and your spiritual health and your journey, then health from your place of health, you will actually start being a healthy parent. You'll start being loved to them. You'll start being patient. You'll start learning what you need to do and operate with the work of the Spirit. And so the best thing that you could do um, as a parent, if you're feeling the guilt of all that stuff, is wipe the slate clean, forget what's behind, press on towards what's ahead, yeah. and just allow God to do the work in you. Because until he does it in you, until he does the work in you, he can't do the work through you to become the parent you're called to be. And so, you know, I would just encourage you, work on you. Work on your relationship with God. Allow him to mold and shape in you. Because what you sometimes, not all the time, what you see in your children that you don't like are many times the result of things in you you've never dealt with. And so, man, that's a, that's a cold, hard reality that should drive us to the feet of Jesus, to live in a place of humility, seeking and desiring him, knowing that every day I wake up, man, I need his mercy. It's new every morning. I'm going to press into Jesus and become the man of God, the father, the husband you need me to be, but I can only be that 
through Jesus. You know, and one of the areas I feel like the enemy tries to get in um, when you start to serve the Lord or whenever you want to course correct, correct or get really serious about some areas of parenting is the enemy likes to make you feel like you're an imposter. Like, who do you think you are now to start being all holier than thou? And sometimes he'll even use your kids to say that. Like, oh, uh, you don't swear now? Or, oh, wow, like you don't drink now? Or you don't go out? Or, or you're not on your phone? And so he'll try to use those voices to keep you almost held hostage against moving in freedom and course correcting in the areas really stripping you for, of your God-given authority. He likes to usurp that either through your own thoughts or through other people. And so standing in that place of authority and being transparent and authentic with mm -hmm. your kids and say, you know what, I was wrong in the past, but this is the way we're going to go now because this is what God's word